so we're going to take out my Revenge and Rhino fleet and I'm going to show you a few targets in the weekly mission and just what a difference that this fleet has made to the ability to do the Elite tier twice in each week. Let's just have a look at the ships first. Okay, the Revenge. This was in the Defiance raid and it was the top prize, the new hull. At the time that I coined the build on this, I didn't ha yet have the Cobra scatter guns, uh, not the Cobra scatter guns, the chain guns, and I loaded them up with D92F missile launchers. As you can see, I've put six on the ship, and I've put a Phalanx three because I don't yet have the Phalanx four, but I had a spare gale lying around, and I've put that on for anti-mortar. Now, in terms of enhancing the ship, and we know it's an incredible hull already, I've put siege battery on for the extra building and wall damage, and also for the defence from turrets. Now, that helps to mitigate somewhat the fact that this hull does not have ballistic or radioactive defence. I've put the speed system 5 on, because the turn speed on this is worse than a, a cemented brick. It just does not turn at all. This helps it somewhat, and as it's ranked up, it's uh, it's got better and better. And I'll be changing the armors once the second hull for this has been built, which I'm building in slow time. I've added the fusion chargers to give me that times three supercharge on the uh, launchers, and. I've added countermeasure loaders to give me a bit of extra reload um, both on the launchers and on the, the antis. And obviously a bit of extra range against mortars and missiles on the antis. Now my heavy plate armour, uh, the special, was not retrofitted up to any decent level. And I actually get better explosive and penetrating defence by using this MX3 alloy armour and I've paired that with the anti-missile armor, the D4M, and I've put two of those on because I want to be able to offset all the missiles coming in as I move into range for shooting, bearing in mind that the launchers only have a 91 range. And overall, I've built up some pretty decent stats with that combination. Um, the ballistic defense is still the weak point, as is the radioactive defense. If I get near um, a ballistic cannon, I start taking damage big time. And the radioactive defense, fortunately, is not too much of a problem. Um, it just doesn't seem to scratch this ship very much at, in its current configuration. So let's have a look at the rhinos. Well, the rhinos were built from the start to be standoff ships, and that was exactly how I wanted to use them. So we've got a bunch of these D-53D disruption missiles. We've got three on each ship to slow down enemy ships, and we've got a whole heap of the Harrier D-52Rs and in fact I think it's eight of them on each ship. So we've got 11 offensive weapons on each uh, Rhino. We've got a Phalanx 3 which gives me a bit of penetrating defense and we've got a Hailstorm uh, 3 or C I should say which gives me a bit of anti-explosive defense and then I've put a pair of Tridents on. Now the main reason I put the Tridents on apart from their anti-missile capability was to give me some additional rapid fire close in defense if anything got too close. You know, the Trident is not really a replacement for the Phalanx, but it's very useful in terms of giving you close support defense if enemy ships break through to you. On the armor side, I wanted to increase the turn speed, I wanted th these things to turn on a sixpence. So I put a pair of T-armors on them. I also wanted as much speed as possible because they're quick. You know, 30 speed is what I've managed to get them to, um, but they're nowhere near as quick as the Revenge. 
So I've put a couple of V's on them just to help it up to that 30 speed that they do have and I've added an evade armor just to give them a bit more evade. In terms of the specials, well, you know, a D5X is, in my view, absolutely essential. It's, um, it gives you a massive boost on your defenses and it doesn't cost you any repair time. And again, the speed system 5, because I want the turn speed uh, as well as the map speed. And obviously I get the evade bonus and com uh, combat speed boost as well. Agility system for yet more evade, as well as for stun and slow resistance, which can be essential when you're hitting draconian bases. Countermeasure loaders. Again, I've got to upgrade these after the, the shipyard frees up, because I've now got a, a higher level one of these and guided missile system 4 in order to get the maximum range out of those missiles um, as well as better accuracy and most importantly to add the retargetable capability. I noticed during the defiance raid that not having the retargeting on the rhinos because it's not inherent to the hull was really hurting me when I was doing the higher level targets soon as I added the retargetable, what a difference it made. So, what did we end up on that? Well, we ended up with a heap of sort of 30, 40, 50 percent bonuses in different stuff, 150 percent on penetrating, which is incredible, um, and in defense measures, you know, we're in the 50s and 60s on everything, which is fantastic. And that includes the stun and slow as well, which is now down here under um, special abilities. Movement wise, well, combat speed of 30 and a turn speed of 34 is not sluggish. It's not the fastest I've got, but it's pretty good. And of course that map speed of 80 makes quite a difference. So let's just put these out on the water and let's go kill something. Just minimize this lot because I don't need it. Right. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go and hit a, a level 47 uh, military stronghold. I tend to use these now as um, my benchmark um, targets. And the reason I want to show you this one is that I'm pretty confident I can go around there and end up with less than a couple of minutes damage. And I just want you to see the difference in speed and turning that the, the Revenge and the Rhinos have got. So in we go. Okay, going to do the usual thing. Up arrow to select all four ships. Down arrow to tell them to stand still. Let's give the defense fleet a chance to get into their position so that we can knock them down as quickly as possible. I find it... Uh, more advantageous to let them come out rather than to charge in and try and stop them doing so. Now what we want to do is we want to have the rhinos in a position where they can hit the torpedo towers either with the retargeting or with direct fire. So I'm going to move the entire fleet down to here and I'm going to move the revenge a little bit ahead so that it acts like a tank and I think you'll be surprised it just the way nothing seems to scratch it. So we're bringing it in like that and just watch the missiles retarget off the rhinos. That DNX is dead and damn they didn't overshoot. Okay so what we're then going to do this torp tower is punishing us. Let's just go down take him out and then we'll turn around and you can see what I mean about the turning speed. The revenge just does not turn at all and that means the rhinos will end up taking damage if I don't do something here. So we do that then we move the fleet up to this corner. The rhinos will take out some of the center on the way past, hopefully the mortars. Yeah there we go, the mortars are gone the revenge meanwhile takes out the turrets on the corner, let the rhinos catch up, 
and and we'll just peek round the corner to get that torque tower which is going to get two pairs of torpedoes off at the revenge and that'll barely scratch them so we then move the fleet into here into the middle of that gateway and as it's moving round we'll select the revenge to go kill that torpedo tower so we don't have to worry about it and you can see the rhino is taking out that DNX on the far side which means there's only these four turrets in the corner to get shot of. Nice quick run round very very fast takes the 47 down there we go gone. Now one of the rhinos took a, a bit of a pummeling there off the torpedo tower because the revenge was so slow to turn. Um, if I try to repair it on the map what's it telling me? Telling me 18 minutes which overall you know if I take that back to base that's going to be instant repairs so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to leave them there and we're going to go do a 65. Now the 65's are about 980,000 points and I've found a pretty good way of doing these for minimal repairs and in fact last night I was doing these one at a time returning to base instant repairing the fleet and then coming back and doing another one so we come in from the north select the fleet down arrow to tell it to stand still let's wait for all these DNX's to to move out and you know <laughs> they're uh, I don't think they've got engines on these things I think the crew are paddling them because they are just so slow these DNX's but the key one is um, th this one here um, we need that one to be at or past the torpedo tower in front of it once it's there then we can move in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move more or less due south and then move the revenge up further so there we are we'll bring him in select the revenge and I want the revenge to go inside that corner and just watch the amount of fire that gets thrown at it and the, you know it just doesn't seem to take damage so we want the revenge to kill that torpedo tower and now that all the mortars and everything else are homed in on the revenge we'll just bring the, the rhinos in a little bit let them use that uh, remote targeting and help to thin out the defences and we'll bring the the revenge around and target the torpedo tower that will make it stop just on that corner and that will then allow us to bring in the rhinos a bit more and we thin out the defences in this first gate and I'm going to move them all down to here and tell the revenge to go on a bit further because obviously the rhinos are remote targeting off the range circle of the revenge and we're just going to sit here and we're going to kill as much as we can and once everything within the revenge's range circle is dead then we're going to move them up and what I'm going to tell that what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the revenge to kill that torpedo tower and I'm going to move the rhinos into the gateway give them that extra bit of range I'll take down those few turrets that do come into range and we'll move the entire fleet to there and tell the revenge to go kill that torpedo tower and again we're just going to sit here and tell everything in range is dead
select the entire fleet, move them into the gateway, move the revenge a little bit further forward so that it's tanking the <coughs> so that it's tanking all the fire. And the idea is to try and get zero damage on the rhinos. Because the revenge isn't going to get much. At the most, it, you know, after doing a, a 65 and a 47, it should have 6-7 minutes damage on the, the revenge. Go into base, repair for 2 minutes, do the 5 minute free speed up, and that's it. So, there we go, that's the 65 done. And after all of that, Oh, we are 924,000. After all of that, remember we had 18 minutes repair before we went in. We've now got an hour 20. Somewhere I must have messed up because the rhinos have taken a lot of damage. Right, that is normally the rhinos go through a 65 with zero damage because it's the revenge that's taking it all. So what I'm going to do is just recall the fleet and I'll just pause the video here and r record it again afterwards once I've repaired these things. I'll be back soon. Okay, the fleet's repaired. Let's go out. I'm going to hit a 55 first. Might as well show you different levels getting hit by this thing. And then we'll do another 65 just to show that I, in fact, there's a 65. Let's go into the 65 first. I'll just show you that this thing can come out with the equivalent of instant repairs. So as I said, select the fleet, arrow down to make them stand still, wait for the DNXs coming out, and as I said before, this one is the key one. We want him up at the torpedo tower. And there's no point going in too soon because it makes them stop as soon as we're in range. The idea is we want them all to travel away from the center of the base and then they're much easier to take out. Come on, get a move on. Hurry up. Well, as long as he's alongside the torpedo tower, I know that we can target him. So we'll bring the fleet down to there and we take the revenge into there. Revenge to target the torpedo tower. Right, that's I think is all we can get. So let's bring the revenge up to there. This time I'm going to use the revenge to lead the mortars in a little bit and try and avoid some of the splash damage on the rhinos. So the mortars are retargeting the revenge's new position and because of that I can now move in the rhinos Now that all of those defences are gone, I'm going to move the revenge into the gate first, and I'll bring the rhinos in once the mortars have retargeted to the revenge's new position, which it looks like they've now done. And 
we'll just let the rhinos clear as many of the platform uh, as many of the turrets as possible from that middle platform. Right, time for the revenge to kill the torpedo tower. Just make sure there's no mortars in the air, and then we bring in the rhinos. fleet to there, take the rhino round to kill that torpedo tower, uh, sorry the revenge to kill that torpedo tower, let the rhinos do what the rhinos do, that's the torpedo tower down, that's the, the torpedo towers are the main damages for the revenge. It's pretty much immune to anything in a 65 except the torpedo towers. So we'll bring the fleet up and park it there and move the revenge forward. And, <coughs> excuse me and we'll bring the fleet out to deal with those last two towers. Uh, that was a far better run than the first time through and I think you'll uh, you'll agree with me when I show you the repair time as we come out that we've got an instant repair fleet here or effectively an in instant repair fleet. Let's just have a look. There we are, 8 minutes, 7 seconds. So if we dive back to base, it's 3 minutes, 7 seconds repair on the Revenge, and then a 5 minute free speed up. It's as good as instant repair, isn't it? Now I know it's carrying 500% of resources, so I'm going to recall the fleet and empty it out. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to pause recording, and then we'll come out and we'll do the 55. Okay, so we're back on the water after uh, about three minutes of repair. I'm going to go up and do this 55, like I said. The three minutes waiting for it to count down to the free speed up was not totally wasted. I uh, used it to upgrade about a dozen walls. So, you know, even a couple of minutes more than the free repair can be useful. Now I'm going to go into the 55 and we're going to do it pretty much the same way as the 65 but obviously with it having less turrets we can actually go around it a little bit faster and we can kill things off a little quicker. So select the fleet, tell them to stand still, let's go and again this DNX is the one that's critical. We want it up by that torpedo tower. And that will also allow the two at the northeast of the base to get out of that gate, make them easier to kill. And it'll also give the rhinos a few extra targets to try and get some overflight on the missiles and take out the torpedo tower on the northeast side without having to focus on it. So move the fleet down again, same sort of position, take the revenge, bring it in close, and everything's targeting the revenge because it's at the front. The rhinos should have a field day here. The big disadvantage, of course, to bringing the rhino in that close is its turning speed. I really need to get that T armor on it to let it turn a bit faster. Because it tends to get a little bit hung up in that corner. And we just target the torpedo tower. And as I say, the torpedoes really are the, the nemesis of the revenge. It's the one thing that it doesn't seem to have counter for. Move the revenge inside the gate. 
and we'll bring the rhinos up to here and we should pretty much kill all of this northeast half of the base now just from this position we'll bring the revenge down to deal with that torpedo tower which allows us to bring the rhinos into the gate itself Once that torpedo tower is gone, we move the fleet to there, move the revenge ahead. We tell the revenge to kill the torpedo tower while it's in the shelter of the walls. And then we bring the fleet up to here, send the revenge in front. And we shouldn't need to do another movement. We should be able to kill everything off just from that position. There we go. About 40, 45 seconds to do a 55. And that gives us 444,000 tips us over the 40 million. This is the second time through the raid, so I'm on the uh, the rerun. So I've only got about 10 million to get. And repair should be instant on the map. Yeah, it is. 4 minutes 39 seconds for that. You can do an instant free repair on the map. Hi. Okay, welcome back again. Um, I'm going to show you a Draconium Armada. Now, these ones are useful. They're only a level 45, but you get about 5,000 uranium out of them, which lets you do about 50 walls between hitting your weekly mission targets. So, let's just go in for the attack. And you might think this is an easy target for a Revenge Rhino fleet. And it is, really. But there's a way to do it for minimum damage that I've found. So we'll pick the whole fleet. We'll tell it to go there. And then we pick the revenge. And we tell it to go a little bit south of there. And off we go. Now we don't want to let any of those um, draconian ships anywhere near the rhinos. We don't want them taking damage. So you can see that those uh, ion cannons or whatever they're using are punishing the revenge a fair bit. But th th thankfully, the rhinos are taking no damage. So there we go. That'll be 5,000 uranium, thank you. Okay, just under. Three under 5,000 and nearly a full hold of resources and repair wise 23 minutes okay so we'll send it back to base we'll repair that for free and we'll build some walls at the same time see you in a few minutes to do some draconian mining bases Right, here we go. I promised I'd show you how to do some draconian mining bases using the Revenge and Rhino fleet. <coughs> so here we are. Secret to this one, I find, come in due south. And again, we're going to split the fleet right from the off before we press the let go button. Okay, now this turret here is the key one. It's the anti missile one. So we're going to send the whole fleet there, pick off the revenge, put it there, target that uh, turret. And this is why I don't have missiles on the revenge. You see, right, we've got 33 missiles going in with every volley off the rhinos and one anti-missile turret is taking all of them down every time 
as soon as we get rid of that anti-missile turret, the missiles from the, the rhinos are going in and doing their work. There's another anti-missile turret at the end of this pier, so we're going to go get him. Just move forward so we can get the turret at the back afterwards. And we're going to move the rhinos forward. so that they can do what they do. And we select the entire fleet. And we'll bring it back. And we'll go up the outside of the base here. We got rid of one of the torpedo turrets there. We've got this other one in the middle to sort out. But first we want to take care of the turrets at the north end of this base. And we're going to send the whole fleet to there, pick off the rhino, and send it against that anti-missile turret. And we're going to park it there, ready for coming round and taking out the torpedo tower. and the fleet just kills off these buildings on the way round which makes this a nice quick target it takes about a minute and a half maybe two minutes it depends how quick you are with the mouse and of course you get um, base parts out of this one for speeding up your refits to turrets and buildings as well as some resources and with the new foundry feature you also get some level 3 um, hull components or siege parts which makes it a worthwhile target it's not the quickest way to build up all the bits that you need for different things but it's you know it's a free repair after this one at least it is with the revenge and rhinos fleet so now that the anti-missile turret is gone we'll send the revenge round there and it will park up um, in the corner where the torpedo tower can't shoot at it. And between it and the rhinos, it will kill off the torpedo tower very quickly. So it just comes around there. Tucks itself in there. The torpedo tower can't shoot it. And pop, pop, pop. Bye, bye. Target done. Give me the goodies. There we are, we get um, two tier 3 siege fragments and 23,000 base parts plus a bit of res. So what's the repairs? Let's just have a look. And that's 13 minutes spread equally across all four ships. So that's an instant repair when I send it back to base. Just repair them one by one, instant free repair. So, I'll just send them back to base, and I'll repair them. And I hope you've enjoyed watching the way that I do these uh, different targets, the 47, the 55, and the 65 weekly mission targets. And then the level 45 Drac Armada, and the level 60 Draconian Mining Base. You see our sector's pr pretty active. Um, watch them, maybe try the tactics I've used, try the fleet that I've used, and, you know, the whole thing is try and reduce coining and make the game enjoyable. And it is enjoyable when you're killing targets and not taking very much damage. However, just a word of caution, the revenge fleet, or the revenge hull, is due for um, recalibration on the 3rd of May and it's going to be retuned as different elements are added to the game to make it PvP against player bases. We don't know if it will still be as successful against um, uh, PvE bases, artificial intelligence bases. Hopefully it will, because 
it's you know we've needed a leverage hull for a long time so hopefully kicks eye won't nerf it too much when it comes to doing the uh, draconian and other targets that we have to hit it's certainly working very well for now and if you've got it make use of it let's get as much out of the game as we can before the changes arrive like i said hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you again soon